Hey, Dan here. Backyard flare down in Tucson, Arizona. Previous videos, we showed you the pouring of concrete. We showed you the adding of the rebar to the concrete using masonry drill bits, being able to uh, put your rebar in vertically. In this video, we're going to show you the mixing of the mortar and the adding of the block to that slab. Now, these slabs are, are important because you have to have one in order to sustain the weight of a fireplace or a uh, outdoor kitchen. However, Laying up the block is where the structure really comes alive. We're going to get into some of that right now, including some of the tools you're going to need and some of the techniques that you can use along the way. So we're going to be adding that block to that slab. In order to do that, we need a few things. First of all, you need something to mix in and something to mix with. In this case, we're going to use a little shovel. Uh, a little bin a lot of, is, going to, is going to work for this demonstration. A lot of times people will use a wheelbarrow if they're doing a larger structure. Just a 60-pound bag of mortar mix is what I use, a quick crete. This is usually about 3 325 at Home Depot or Lowe's, so I use the uh, pretty inexpensive stuff. It works great. You need a way to cut block. Uh, this is a 9 and inch angle grinder with a diamond blade attached and then you need an assortment of some hand tools uh, you don't really need any more than one uh, what I tend to use almost always is going to be this baby right here it's well used but uh, it's uh, pretty pretty effective for what I do so let's get started okay so we're gonna go ahead and use our hand tool uh, we're getting ready to mix some mortar I always want to use eye protection. Whenever I use anything of powder, whenever I do any block cutting, I always protect my eyes. Keep that in mind. Okay, let's get started. For this project, we're not going to need to use the entire bag, so we don't need to mix it all. Mortar can be pretty messy, so I tend to try to keep the dust down as much as possible. Always pay attention that you don't leave dry powder at the bottom of your mixing bin or your wheelbarrow. Now if you add too much water, just like I did, it's just as easy to add a little bit more powder to suck up some of that water. You'll have, you'll have a little bit more mortar in the end, maybe than what you needed, but your mixture will be nice. Sometimes all it takes is a little bit. Now, if you were mixing an entire bag, there's actually some instructions on that bag that'll go over how much water you would need if you were mixing the whole bag. In this case, since we're doing just a little bit, it's more on consistency. You kind of go with what you're used to seeing, what you're used to uh, using. You'll, you'll get good at that after a while. Make sure you clean off your tools because this stuff will stain and it will uh, get to a point where it's really hard to get off after a while. So clean them off while they're wet and you'll be happier when, you, when, when it comes to cleaning. Okay, I just put some mortar on that and I uh, threw it off and it leaves a little bit of residue on there. That's what that's what I'm looking for. As soon as I get the residue, I know that I'm ready to go. 
Okay, so we've got our mortar mixed and we're getting ready to go. So we want to lay those blocks on top of that. Now I know where they're going to go, but let's just say that you don't have a very good outline on your slab as to where the outside of the block is. You put your block in place, you get it kind of where you want it, and then it's literally kind of easy. You can score that Score that slab right where the outside of the block is. Now you know where your mortar is going to go. It's pretty simple. All right, let's get going. So once you get your mortar in, ready to go, I like to use the back of my trowel, uh, the back side instead of the front side. Uh, the back side just seems to be better for me. It's actually uh, just a simpler way of doing it for me. Uh, I always pull up at the edge, get some on my, it's kind of wet there. some on the edge and I will throw that mortar right on the perimeter of that block. Now you may get some in other places. It's perfectly fine. A good majority of your structure is going to be covered in a veneer. So getting this thing uh, some extra extra mortar around is not going to be a big deal. What you're looking for is a mortar gap of approximately three-eighths of an inch. Now, if you stack your mortar about an, about an inch high, once you get the weight of the block on that structure, uh, on that slab, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hold it pretty well. As long as it's not too wet, it won't all ooze out. Right on the dot, right on the dot. You want to run it that way as well. Okay, now we need to come down on this edge. And we're good to go. Okay, it's first one. So now you could literally scrape this off the outside. You can actually reuse some of that mortar. We're just going to keep going. Now we are going to do what's called a running bond pattern. What that is, is a staggered block pattern that you're going to use for strength. Because my next block is actually going to be perpendicular to this one. Again, you don't have to be perfectly precise with the placement of the mortar. What you're doing is you're getting your base row started, and your base row is by far the one that takes the longest because that's where most of your leveling is done. Now, I do know that I'm going to have a vertical seam as well as a horizontal seam of mortar, so I'm going to want to put mortar between this block and this and this edge between here and here. You smear some in there, so a lot of times it does not want to stick. Sometimes you gotta use some wetter mortar in order to get this to stick. But with anything else, you take your time, and it all works out.
show you what we got here. Clean up these edges around the outside. You're going to look inside your block, and you're going to notice that you have actual uh, squished out mortar inside the, the voids of these blocks. It's not a big deal. You're going to leave that alone. That will all dry and it will disappear overall. All right. So once we do this, uh, these two blocks are level with each other. So what are we going to do next? We're going to start that staggered running bond pattern. What that means is that the center of this block is actually going to be over the seam of this block. So it's actually going to be in that position right there. So let's keep going. You're going to apply your mortar to the top of this block just like you did the slab below it. You're going to get mortar on your hands. And this mortar is going to dry out your hands. It may not feel very good uh, in the hours and the days to come if you're doing this for several days at a time. But understand that a little bit of lotion goes a long way. Okay. So when you do these blocks like this, there's three things you need to pay attention to. The first one is going to be your orientation this way, your levelness. So I'm going to hit this and I'm going to get this just right. Okay, my bubble's right in the middle. The next one is to turn it this way. That bubble is perfectly in the center right now. The third one you're going to do is vertical. You're going to check this. I need to go this direction with my block, my top block, so it matches the line here. Then I also want to do that here. So the whole block needs to come towards the uh, towards the level. Yeah, we're good. So now that we have our running bond pattern of these main blocks set up, we want to finish off the ends. We want to do that 888 end block. We're going to use 888 blocks for those. So let's get started. We're going to mortar those in place just like we did these first three blocks. Okay, so I just mortared the 888 block in place. That's this one right here. Now, one of the things that we would need to do at this point, because at this point we're going to go ahead and cap finish off the top of this structure with two inch cap block. It's going to be about a two inch solid block which is right there. Now you're going to notice that there's rebar in the first and the third hole. Now what you would do before you added the solid block is you would fill this void with concrete and you would fill this void with concrete all the way to the top uh, that would actually bind all these blocks together and it would make a very very sturdy structure. That's the reason for the rebar and the concrete inside the cores. So let's get started on uh, some, some adding of the cap block and let's get uh, some cutting done. Okay, so let's get started. What we've got here is a this is an H216 solid cap block. Uh, put this in place. This is actually going to be mortared in place, but uh, we're going to continue this off with more solid block. We've actually got Another one, you can do two things. You can either give yourself a mortar allowance or you can actually butt these up for a nice solid top and then cut this. We're going to go with a solid top on this one just because this is the top of our structure. There's no need for mortar up there. And we'll go ahead and 
score the bottom. This does do a number on your tools, but uh, now we've got ourselves a nice line that we can actually use to cut. So let's get started with that. Keep in mind, if you use something on the ground like wood, it'll suspend the block and be able to keep it off the ground so you can actually cut. So let's get started on that. I use my grinder with my, uh, my diamond blade, and I always use eye protection, as I said before, so keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. saw how easy that was to cut these. Uh, sometimes you're going to end up with some broken edges. Not a big deal at all because those will be mortared in place. So you'll see that that is a good fit. Uh, I could have used this side. I could trim that edge off a little bit and use that one. Uh, that will allow us to have uh, no mortar allowance. So let's go ahead and put this one in place and see what happens with it. So. Go ahead and take these off. I'm going to be using the same technique we did previously. Where the edge of one block was, you always want to put a little bit of mortar in there so you support the entire perimeter of that block. Running out of mortar here. Good, it's less I have to actually throw away at the end. I'm going to add just a little bit of mortar here, give it that final finished look. This one here. That's the top of the row right there. You can run your level across the top, make sure everything's good. That is a perfect bubble right in the middle. Uh, it's pretty, pretty good for the top of the structure. So, you'll notice that I actually scraped these. There's a good way to get these things looking more like this, if you can see that in the picture. This is to use a, you know, a joint tool here. You can actually clean those lines up pretty well, and it looks more like what you'd see in a professional wall. Uh, it's not going to matter that you do this, because you're going to be covering the structure with veneer. So it's not a big deal any more than it would be just scraping these things clean. But uh, there you have it, folks. It's pretty simple. So if you have any questions, uh, please let us know. You can email us at dan at Backyard Flare, or you can always call us. Uh, go to www.backyardflare.com. We'd love to hear from you. We want to see what you got going on in your backyard. If you build something, please send us pictures. Thanks a lot.